Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I'm Sunny Pancholi, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leaders interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such corporate titan on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Mr. Jagdish Kumar Samhadri. He is a seasoned and dynamic engineering manager with over one and a half decades of rich and diverse experience in the technology sector. He has consistently demonstrated exceptional leadership skills, driven innovation, and delivered high quality technology solutions across various domains. With a career spanning multiple leadership roles, he has effectively managed and scaled data engineering teams, enabling them to align with the business growth and objectives. Currently serving as the head of data engineering at Pragmatic Play Private Limited India, since December 2021, he is responsible for owning the measurement and analytics charter for the organization. Welcome to FaceTime with Leaders. We appreciate your willingness to share your knowledge and engage in this conversation. So, Mr. Simhadri, to begin with, our viewers would like to know in brief about your career journey with important milestones, decisions, etc., shaping your professionalism, motivations, inspirations, etc. First of all, thank you for the kind words, Sunny. It's a honor to be here. Yeah. Thanks once again. Uh, let me start with my journey. Like I started with Satyam Computers way back in 2004 as a software engineer. There I was able to work for the largest bank in the UK, Barclays. And uh, I was also fortunate to build a terror data pool within Satyam Computers through coaching, teaching, as well as mentorship. Um, post that, I uh, like after 2009 debacle of Satyam Computers, I moved on to the Ivy by Comtech, which is a subsidiary company of Party Gaming. Again, it's a casino-based company uh, based in Gibraltar, UK, but the technology firm is within India. So there I grew uh, both in terms of professionalism as well as technical. So that's where I came to the business intelligence side of the things and got introduced to multi, uh, multi terabytes of data, I would say. And then uh, I was also got an opportunity to involve in Bivin, which is one of the betting, huge betting sites companies, sportsbook company, uh, where party gaming as well as Bivin got merged. So uh, I was, I had opportunity to travel with the team to Vienna, go through the things, understand how the merger was happening on the BI side as well. And after a few years, like I left Ivy went to join Amazon, where like, uh, as you are aware, Amazon is across, across the globe. I got opportunity to work with diversified customers, diversified business areas so, uh, growing vertically as well as horizontally across Amazon. Uh, I would say like there were about 14 different countries and multiple time zones where I worked with multiple customers, which helped me to understand culture across multiple boundaries as well as varied businesses, I would say. And post that, uh, like I have moved on to Pragmatic Play as the head of data engineering. So there were multiple leaders who have been inspired throughout my journey, probably we'll discuss as we go forward. But uh, today as in, I'm heading the Pragmatic Play head of uh, data engineering team where I lead the complete data analytics for the team, for the organization, I would say. Again, it's a gaming domain. It's um, more of a casino, poker, some, some sort of that kind. All right. Thank you for the excellent start to this interview. It's an honor to interact with someone who exudes such a strong corporate personality. So continuing our conversation, and before I ask the second question, do you bet? Uh, I used to be a poker player way back in 2012, where party gaming was allowed. Uh, like, we used to have an internal 
championship so i think i had like four different tournaments which i have won so i had one kid at that time so every time there used to be a prize like a apple ipod or a apple ipad i used to win play the tournament and win try to win that tournament so probably i have gifted four different devices to my son during that time so poker was the only thing which i used to play not nothing else on the sports book or casino all right okay so let's continue our conversation and we would like to know you have several feathers in your head namely a vast array of skills broadening your technical purview do you consider it the timely unfolding of your professionalism or do you owe it all to your adaptability to or fondness for the technical field yeah i would say like it's a mixture of both the fondness as well as the adaptability so i have been a tech savvy and have been learning multiple technologies and till date i feel like uh, whenever i think start it's always day one so learn the new technologies try to understand them adapt to it and master them that's what i follow and similarly uh, like uh, in order to learn something you have to be very good listener on your end unless you are a good listener and good learner it is very hard to understand the language or new technologies i would say and mastering them is the second part so i would say like adaptability is the key there and accepting the change is the second thing and then uh, mastering your skills is what you learn over the time uh, but with the changing things i would say it's more about the uh, structure which you form yourself or the way you organize the things around you is very much important interesting so that leads us to our next question and uh, here it is which of your job roles or functions you have enjoyed the most it's a very tough question because i loved every moment of my journey so far from software developer to the head of the department i have been enjoying a lot so whether uh, when i was in sachin computers i had opportunity to be almost 150 plus teradata resources at that time creating a different pool under ramakrishna vedantam Who was head of our vertical, or uh, as part of IBM, right? I was able to understand the overall uh, reporting set, semantic layer, or the way the business intelligence works under Prashant Reddy, Rachal, and Bhavani. And then I moved on to the BVN party merger, where I could see a lot of corporate side of the thing, corporate governance side of the thing. And then in Amazon, as I said, every day it's a different. a uh, few skills and different challenges which we come across and there has been like multiple learnings in within the amazon so i would say i would rate my journey in amazon as a top most uh, at the stint where i enjoyed a lot of uh, interacting with multiple customers at a time and and it's not easy i would say like i've been dealing with multiple marketing managers across multiple countries in multiple time zones so you have to shift your attitude as well as your be able to each of them based on their instinct in order to suit the business so i am a person where i believe in mostly like customer success so i'm customer obsessed so i put myself in their shoe and try to understand their problem and then work towards that so amazon is a place i enjoyed a lot of this characteristic i would say amazing mr jagdish so now that we have discussed your career journey your professional pursuits roles and responsibilities Let's move on to another subject, which is uh, on corporate governance and ESG. So here is my next question for you: How and when did you develop an interest in ESG and corporate governance? I think it has been always been there. Like, uh, if I, I would say, like when I was traveling with my team to Vienna for Vivian merger, so we played like a Trojan horses there. Like we were just, we know that it's going to come to our team, but still we went there. we were discussing with the team to understand what was there uh, how they have been doing on their end but still like we know it comes to our fore and we need to protect the people's interest as well as uh, ensure the amalgamation was proper or i would give another example like within satyam uh, sorry in amazon i was working for a uh, team called socialites so usually my boundaries are about just metrics and measurements so managing the complete business intelligence side of the things but there was a time where uh, there were like a lot of critical things on the google and the apple side where we are not able to track the customers any for forward like we will not get any session properties going forward so at that time uh, it is important we understand our customer and retain them appropriately on our end so i took a step ahead and went into strategy marketing side 
and develop my own interest in terms of how I can create a strategy to get the people back. So you might have heard about RFM methodology in strategy marketing. So that is what something I have modified and implemented within the social media in order to ensure our customer base is protected or we can grow forward in terms of the business. So there are a lot of such examples which have been part of corporate governance in terms of monitoring or strategy marketing or creating a vision for our team or setting up the path for the team on those lines. Absolutely, Mr. Jagdish. So before we conclude our discussion on this subject, uh, I would like to ask you, as an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the corporate world? I would say like, I'm still, uh, I've just started with the ECA, ESG. Um, I'm get to understand my own power there in order to contribute. But what I feel is like, uh, even if I contribute 0.1% of change, or even if I can bring a change, small change within my area, that will be enough for me to fulfill my dream. So I have been working a lot, but it's time to give back to the society as well, right? And I see ESG is the right thing to do because it will ensure you are creating the strategies which will sustain in terms of business as well as protecting the environment and human beings. So even if I can put a single drop in the ocean of ESG, that will be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Let's discuss something about technology. So uh, as you belong to that uh, space, uh, as someone working closely with technology, what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen with changes in technology in your field? That is part A and part B is what changes you expect to see with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, web, web 3.0, big data, etc. Yeah. Like I believe in the change is always good. Whether you take it in a negative way or in a positive way, it's just your perception. But change is here to remain. Similarly, there are multiple technologies which were evolving over the time period. And you have to adapt to the technology appropriately, whether it's be IoT or a big data. It's more about how you adapt to the technology that gets the boom to the technology. Even if you see the AI, which is in currently boom in the market, has been from decades in the system. It's only that now people are aware about it and just knowing more about the AI now. Uh, what I would say is like, uh, it's about more about establishing your own processes in order to establish the things. And technology it keeps changing. Like, now, if now there is a huge hype for the AI, you might get a new technology forward. But I would say like among all the technologies which I've seen, big data is something really interesting. The reason being, being a data-driven person, I always want to make decisions based on the data. I never assume the things. So that helped. That's why I'm favoring the big data, I would say. The reason, uh, let me give you a simple example. Consider like this earlier when there were no uh, like Zigbee or Zomato online deliverable things, people used to go to uh, resorts or restaurants or hotels in order to get the food or good quality food, right? But nowadays you have a Zigbee or a Zomato which will deliver right in front of your door, right? Which is a change over in the technology. But if you see the adaptability, even though there were multiple other companies which came, Zigbee and Zomato were widely adapted by the customers. That's where you are now using them. Similarly, there are multiple other tools. Even in the big data world, you have multiple tools, but the way you adapt to the things will make it much more famous, I would say. So it is more important that you have a structure, you have a process to work towards it, and technology follows you. And big data helps you to make a right decision. The reason being, you churn out petabytes of data. Now. Earlier, maybe if you have to make a decision, you used to do Sometime way back in the 90s, like uh, drop the data into Excel, create a workflow, and say that this is what the year on year of growth, or this is what we are seeing. But now, in order to make a decision, the leaders not just focus on the data sets and the data reports, they also do a data mining and data scientist does experiment out around this data, right? You have a huge churn of data. It's important how you can use the data set. So, I would say, like, the way you adopt the data or the way you create the insights of the data. It's, key in order to succeed in the current world. And it will continue. Maybe it is called as a big data now. I'm sure like in no time, it might be like a smart data as well. Okay. All right. So this brings us to the last question of the session. And here it is. 
We are building a community of industry magnates. The move is meant for cross pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. So, what are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by Mr. Zishan Patan, Mr. Hevel Mehta, and the team of World Development Corporation? I would like to extend my thanks to Zishan as well as Hevel Mehta. The reason being, like, uh, until unless I was, uh, I reached out to them, I was unaware about the actually how the independent director landscape or the ECG was helping the complete industry. So after interacting with them, I came to know a lot of things. Maybe we were doing a lot of things in uh, different areas, but those were never connected. And Jisan created this platform where multiple world leaders are getting connected towards and they are, they are understanding more of the ECG now. And sooner or later, this complete community will take over for sure. And we will create more sustainable businesses going forward and more ethics will be followed. I would say like we will create more uh, eco-friendly products or more eco-friendly business because of this community for sure. Great. And all that uh, credit goes to this world community, I would definitely say, and that's where like I always credit them a lot. Great, great. It was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will inspire the future leaders. Thank you, Mr. Jagdish Kumar Simadri for joining us today. Wish you the best for your future endeavors. Thank you, Zini, and have a great day. You too. Thank you.